Welcome back to the channel. I'm starting a new series that focuses on the different programs that are available to you at the University of Toronto. I'll be inviting some friends of mine to talk about their admission program and their programs of study. Keep in mind that these are all personal opinions that intend to help and guide you in making your own undergraduate decisions. There are numerous official U of T services and resources that are available to you as an incoming student and also as a current U of T student. If you have any further questions, feel free to comment down below. May and I will be happy to answer them as best as we could. My name is May. I'm a third year undergraduate student here at the University of Toronto in the Life Sciences program. And today we'll be talking over some general questions about the Life Sciences program and what the uh, program might entail, different sorts of programs, as well as some extraneous details that might be um, important for you to understand. Sit back and enjoy. So why did you choose to go into the Life Science program at the University of Toronto? I picked the Life Sciences program here at the University of Toronto, uh, mainly because I had always wanted to go to the U of T for any sort of program, and I applied for engineering and the Life Sciences program here, actually. I got into both. The main reason that I wanted to pick the Life Sciences program at the University of Toronto over any other university was because of the different programs that were offered specifically. In the Life Sciences program alone at U of T, I believe there are over 20 different possible majors and specialists or mixes that you can do and all of this really provides a multidisciplinary education here at the University of Toronto and of course given that the U of T is situated in Toronto in a very brilliant and lively city in Canada I think this was probably one of the best options for me given that I really really um, really enjoy being in a large and diverse population. What are some common prerequisite courses that high school students should take? I think in terms of prerequisite courses for high school here at the University of Toronto, I think it's actually pretty lenient in terms of what you want to take. So really in high school, you can pursue a lot of your own personal interests. Now for me, I did the IB uh, program in high school. So for me, it was mandatory to take six courses, three of which were higher level, three of which were standard level. And of those for the life sciences program, I found that the most important were obviously biology because a general understanding of biology is applicable through all the life sciences programs. Um, I also did high, higher level chemistry and that was also really important as well as standard level math. Now those courses, biology, math and chemistry are very important because in the first year program here at the life sciences program at U of T, they're mandatory courses for most for most people at least. If you don't do calculus or you don't do chemistry in high school, you, can, you may find it difficult in university to do first year chemistry, especially in organic chemistry. I know a lot of my friends struggled with that. So in terms of solid prerequisites, I highly recommend that you do those three. Otherwise, uh, you might supplement your education in high school with English. I did English. I found English to be something that I expressed my thoughts in. I thought it was something uh, really interesting, actually. I really enjoy reading. I also did um, the standard social studies, although I didn't do that in IB. I did philosophy because that was also something that I was really interested in. So you can really mix and match your high school education to suit whatever you want to do at university because um, I think the University of Toronto is willing to accept a diverse range of students who come from different backgrounds. How did it influence your preparation for university? In terms of beneficial courses from high school, outside of the mandatory ones, which are English and calculus, I found biology and chemistry to be extremely useful at the life sciences program. Now in first year at U of T, what you end up doing is a similar set of courses with all of your year mates because, well firstly, they need to set up a foundation for you to understand basic biology, basic chemistry, and basic calculus in order for you to progress into further uh, academics and specifically into programs. So I found uh, for first year especially that chemistry for me was very useful because I did IB chemistry in the higher level standard. A lot of those um, foundational bits of information was really useful for learning chemistry in the undergraduate level because it was much of the same thing with a little bit added on. Now for calculus this was much of the same and in doing standard level math in IB I was really able to understand or get a feel of differentiation and integration before my university career began. If you choose not to do those in high school, of which you have to do calculus in order to get admitted into the life sciences program, I do think that chemistry first year does become very difficult for you if you don't choose to do chemistry in high school because a lot of those mechanisms, a lot of those um, synthesis steps, uh, for example SN1, SN2 mechanisms, um, they really become tested and they really become very important and structural to the courses 
further on in uh, your undergraduate career. In terms of biology, now I don't think this is a requisite for the life sciences program, I'll have to double check that, but if you have an interest in biology and you really want to start early, I do recommend taking biology in high school because that will really set up a foundation for basic human anatomy, basic understanding of cells, uh, microorganisms, which are really important and useful for studies and programs later on in your university career. The first year U of T courses generally go over biology and chemistry concepts, but it's better to get a head start during high school. What are some factors that students should take into consideration when choosing a college or university? What are the special qualities of U of T? How is the city of Toronto like and how is it like living here? In terms of picking a university, it's really important to consider a wide array of different factors before you actually select. Now for me, I chose the University of Toronto, as said before, for its prestige, for its renown in the life sciences programs, but as well as for the fact that it was in Toronto, a city that I was unaccustomed to. I had never actually been to Toronto before because I'm from Calgary. And now for you Calgarians, you also know that the weather is miserable in the month of November leading up to winter all the way until like May. So really, the weather was also a really big factor for me in picking Toronto. In addition to picking those factors for my career here at uh, U of T, I also decided to come to Toronto because I was able to, my finances allowed me to, and if it does for you as well, then you should consider really applying to a school or a dream school. Now for me, U of T is my dream school, but if not, you can also consider out of province if you're able to. If finances are a limitation for you, undergraduate um, faculties and universities don't uh, matter too much because at the end of the day, it's really what you make out of your undergraduate career, how much research, for example, you get done, how well you know your professors, and what kind of networking you can get done at the um, faculty or the uh, campus that you're on. In terms of the three different campuses, are there different programs that are available between the campuses? So between the three different campuses at the University of Toronto, St. George, Mississauga, and Scarborough, there are also a different array of programs given that there are different faculty members, different specializations. Now, if you want to pick a specific program at the U of T, note that you can take courses between the three campuses as well. So if you choose a specific program, say journalism, which is exclusive to the Scarborough campus of U of T, you are free to take other courses as well on the St. George or Mississauga campus if you choose to commute. So what made you choose New College? In the University of Toronto, and specific to the St. George campus, which is the largest campus of all U of T campuses, you may know that there are seven different different colleges, one of which you get to pick and one of which that you will be sorted into. As a challenge, I think the seven colleges are Ennis, Woodsworth, New, Victoria, Trinity, University, and St. Mike's. Of those colleges, you will get to choose one that you rank best and your choice really should depend on a multitude of different factors. Now, I know a lot of people um, may choose Trinity or University College because of their centrality and the beautiful buildings that they're known for, in addition to Victoria as well. In terms of setting your undergraduate career, you should also consider what kind of courses may be offered at those colleges that might be specific to your interests. Now I know that New College is very specific towards Caribbean studies, towards women and gender and equ equity studies, which are you know pretty big across all university campuses in Canada, but if you're interested in those things and you're interested in doing a course through your undergraduate career in one of those things, you might also consider that as your college factor. Now, in terms of placement and location throughout the campus, the University of Toronto St. George campus is very big. It's situated in Midtown Toronto and getting across from one end of campus to the other can take upwards of 20 minutes. If you're the type of person who wants to live on residence in first year and you don't want to wake up at the crack of dawn to get to your classes and instead you want to wake up like me like five minutes before class, you might want to think about your location and your first year classes locations. Now for life sciences specifically, most of your classes will be at Convocation Call, which is at King's College Circle. So from New College, it's a very short distance. You can actually make it there in about 10 minutes if you're walking slowly. If you have longer legs, you might make it there in five to seven minutes. Now, that's not the same for Victoria College. It takes you upwards of 10, 15 minutes, 10 if you're, sh if you're really fast to get from Victoria all the way to Convocation Hall. And in addition to Convocation Hall, which isn't the only place that you have courses in the first year, you might also have Bay Hen, which is situated near Convocation Hall. Those are where a lot of chemistry tutorials are held. You might also have courses in my hall, or uh, Lash Miller, which is the chemistry building. You might also do physics in your first year, and that's at McLennan uh, Physics Laboratory, 
all of which are situated on the west side of campus. So if your college is situated in the east, you might really want to think about the location and make a really solid plan for where you want to get to your courses. Now, of course, this is not the same for all programs. For the life sciences program specifically, most of the courses are situated on the west side of campus, although there are a few exceptions. However, if you're in the arts or you're in economics, for example, I know that a lot of courses are instead um, situated in the east. So that might also be a big factor. In addition to that, residence might be a big factor for what you consider in terms of college. If you don't get into the residence of your college, you might instead be relocated to Chestnut, which is about 20 minutes off campus on Dundas Street, I believe. But that's quite a far walk, especially in the winter, all the way to campus. Although it's about 20 minutes if you're fast, 25 minutes if you're slow. So in terms of colleges and spaces, you really want to make sure that the college is offering enough adequate spaces for first years. And I know that for most, if not all colleges, there's a first year guarantee. When you're considering college residences, you also really want to look at the quality of the residence. Some buildings and some colleges are very old. They may not even have air conditioning, which I know is true for some of the colleges. I won't name them. However, some other colleges have newer faculties. I do know that university and new college both have newer buildings in Morrison Hall and Wilcox at 45. So if you're really looking for something modern or you're looking for air conditioning, then you may consider those as important factors as well. Residence pricing also varies across different colleges. Some colleges are more expensive than others. Different scholarships are also offered at different colleges and it's important for you to understand which college might offer the scholarships that benefit you the best. I know that most colleges do in-course scholarships for the best grade in courses. There might also be different incentives or different college scholarships depending on the alumni that graduated from those colleges. Oftentimes those scholarships are named after the alumni, but they're only available to specific college students. So that might also be a factor for you to decide which college you want to go to. In terms of residence food, if you do choose to live on residence and you're not actually commuting, it's also really important to consider the food and you know the food supply and what kind of food is offered at specific colleges. Usually in the case of non-COVID pandemic times, uh, colleges have different fees or different uh, meal plans for their students. In terms of residence food, that might also be an important factor for you to consider when choosing a college. Now, I lived on residence for two years of my undergraduate career. I'm a third year student now. At New College, I found the food generally to be fairly of higher quality than the other colleges. And I can say with some general confidence that the wider variety and the better quality of food at New College was probably a boon. In addition to uh, food, there's also different set amounts of plans and different costs for the plans at different colleges. Some colleges might charge a little bit more for meal plans, while others might charge less. There are different systems. So it really depends on um, what you can afford, what kind of quality you want. And generally speaking, bigger colleges with bigger amounts of people living in residence with bigger residences in general will have a wider variety of food at you know meal times. What did you do in high school that just made you better prepared as a university student? Now I've already talked about courses and what I've done that I found helpful in high school but I also did a, uh, quite a few extracurriculars so I don't think I was the most active student at my high school actually. I was part of a few clubs uh, one of which was Interact. I'm sure that's pretty common in Canada but basically you do routine volunteering in the community through food banks through things like food donations donation or um, helping the homeless. So in addition to Interact, I was also part of a club called Youth in Action and that was for more overseas aid, almost like Amnesty, in addition coupled with community volunteering. So I did a lot of community volunteering in high school. I was also part of a club at my high school called Study Space. It was pretty newly founded and it was basically an after school study area for students who were struggling. Use this space and use this opportunity to seek out help in subjects like math, English, uh, physics, whatever help they needed. What do you think is most important to know before coming to university? Well, for Celia, you want to make sure that you have a good financial situation before coming to university. You want to make sure that your finances don't suddenly drop off in the middle of the year. That can be quite devastating. So you really want your student loans, if you're getting them, to be steady. You want to make sure that they're coming in at the right increments at the right time. If not, you want to call your provincial registrar or student aid uh, facility. If you're choosing to move out of province for your university career, you also really want to make sure that you have a move-in plan. If you're moving out with your parents, which I do recommend because they'll be able to guide you, they'll be able to drive you because renting a car on your own in a new city is quite an interesting experience, though I didn't do it. I actually moved out both times uh, so far um, on my own and it was quite difficult 
as I couldn't carry as much stuff as I wanted to from home. But at the same time, I think it was like a new experience that taught me a lot about travel and traveling safely. If you're moving out of province, highly consider a travel plan before you move out to university and make sure that you get there in time for orientation if you're participating in it or a couple days early if you're moving to a new apartment just to ensure that everything is in order and ensure that you have your furniture, your bed, and those things because the first few weeks of university are very important to get a good sleep in. If you're also moving to an out of province university and you have friends who are coming with you, it might be really important for you to get their contact information. Like even if you weren't really that close in high school, it's really helpful to know somebody familiar when you're traveling um, domestically across the country. That can be really helpful in terms of travel safety. You can have someone look out for you basically and can watch out for your stuff or can help you move even if you're not too familiar with one another. The people that you meet in college really do become pretty lifelong friends. Now, it's funny because me and Amy weren't actually that close in high school, but in university we really got the chance to know each other because we went to the same college, we were from the same high school, we did the same IB program, and we chose, we both chose life sciences program. So I think that really helped us cement our understanding of one another, and I'm pretty happy to call her one of my close friends. We also both lived on residence in first and second year, so that also helped. If you're staying in province, you might want to think about if you want to commute. Across cities, sometimes transportation isn't the best, I understand. If you're able to commute and you're happy commuting, go ahead, fine, and if the commute isn't too long. But I know in Toronto specifically, some people commute all the way from Scarborough, Etobicoke, Mississauga, and that can take quite a long time on the GO train or, you know, in a car maybe if there's traffic or if there's weather issues. So if you're staying in province and you're staying in city, you might want to consider um, your commuting journey. I know some of my friends who stayed in Calgary, uh, they actually rented out different apartments for cheaper near the university in order to just, you know, sleep a couple extra hours, especially if their workload was really intense. So that might be something important for you to consider as well. It's also really important if you're coming to Canada or any Canadian university, especially if you're going to like McGill in Montreal, UFC in Calgary, or any area with a heavy load of snow throughout the winter months. It's really important for you to dress warmly. I know in Canada, a lot of locals have winter parkas from pretty well-known brands, Canada Goose, Moose Knuckles, those kind of things. Those aren't necessary, but those are a boon and they will keep you warm. Just as an honest fact. There are other options if financially that is an issue for you. Woods, I know, makes pretty good parkas. North Face makes pretty good parkas. I'm not sure Architerics, how their pricing works, but I know they also make really good parkas. Eddie Bauer also makes really nice parkas for a very good price. If you are considering moving to a Canadian university and you're from a tropical area and you're not used to the snow, consider investing in a coat or a parka or a down jacket, synthetic or with real animal down, depending on your preferences, and a good pair of winter boots because the snow gets pretty deep in the winter. I think there's upwards of a foot or so of snow. If you're sinking into that, your feet get pretty wet pretty fast, so you might want some taller boots. Usually you might also want a hat or some sort of earmuffs if there's a wind chill. I know in Toronto there's actually a pretty big wind chill. In Calgary there definitely is. I'm pretty sure in Montreal there's also a wind chill. So if you're heading to any of those destinations, consider like a hat as well. Those are pretty important. If you're going to a tropical or moderate climate as UBC or uh, UBC, uh, then maybe a winter coat isn't too necessary for you, just a thicker jacket. But I do know that uh, UBC does have some heavy rainfall, heavy sleet days, so that might also be important for you to consider as well. That's awesome, sounds great. That was a padded question, I didn't realize it was a padded question. What are some bird courses that you took so far? Also, some of our audiences actually don't know what bird courses are, so maybe you could clarify what bird courses mean in terms of the University of Toronto. Well, firstly, a bird course is a easy course to get an A in. And at the U of T, A is an 85% or higher, and A plus is 90% or higher. Now that might sound strange because at different universities, A is actually 90% or higher, and A plus whatever different curriculum or grading system that they use. At U of T, they've actually dropped the grade down to 85% for an A, which is a bit different from other universities that I know of. But a bird course, as mentioned before, is a course that's easy to get an A in. I really want to enforce the idea that a bird course is a course that you probably will enjoy. Other people might say that a course is a bird course, but if they don't enjoy the content, they're not gonna do the reading, they're not gonna go to lecture, or they're gonna find the material tiresome and boring, and they're ultimately not gonna do well in the course. What you call a bird course is something that you find interesting 
to read about, to study, to maybe do a little bit of further research on your own about. For me, I decided to do Sociology 101 because I thought that was a really fascinating topic. I think sociology is applicable in a lot of different scenarios through communities and through, you know, inter-individual re relationships. So I decided to take it. I decided to take it partially because of my interest in philosophy as well. I know that might seem a little bit contradictory. I just wanted to do a little bit more diving in, in how, you know, uh, community research is done. I did find the course very interesting but I didn't actually invest too much time into it because in second year I just had a lot of things to do in the workload so my grade wasn't stellar. I did find the course interesting but not interesting enough to put in enough time for me to get the grade that I wanted in it. So I wouldn't call it a bird course for me though I do have friends who are very interested in the subject who did find it very easy to study for and to find it easy to find the time to study for firstly. But for me, sociology was interesting, but it wasn't interesting enough for me to actually move all of my interest and time to it. Other people might find some other courses easy, like Astrology 101. So if you like stars, that might be something that you really want to do. If you like reading in classic literature, so Greek literature, that kind of thing, you might consider Classics 201. I know on the syllabus there's a lot of epics and poetry, I think, involved. And if you find that interesting and you find language, literature, and how that's evolved, that kind of thing, find it interesting you might also like that course as well. I do know Amy thinks NFS, NFS 284 which is a nutritional sciences course. She thought that one was pretty good and pretty easy so if you like nutritional sciences or you just want to develop a further background understanding of diet and how it plays a role in the function of the body relating to physiology that could also be an interesting course to take. I be an AP programs I think there's a common as to which program is better. I remember hearing that in high school. Personally, I believe that they're very similar to each other. It just depends on your location and whether or not these programs are accessible to you. As long as you gain that experience and that background, that's what's important. Would you mind going over a little bit more about your experience when you took the IB program in high school? In high school, I did do IB. I did the full IB program uh, starting from grade 10 and I did my subjects in chemistry, English, and biology for my higher levels and for my uh, standard levels I did French ab initio, I did math standard level and I also did philosophy in standard level. I don't really know what to say for AP in terms of how their grading scheme or how rigorous their standards are but I do know that IB did instill a lot of ethic and work attitude for me at least in terms of academics because IB was challenging and it did really push me a lot in some ways. Um, especially in the internal assessments, in the essay, any of those related to um, specific projects for the IB program. I don't know what it's like to do AP, so I can't really say, but in terms of IB, I also found that the exams at the end of the year were also pretty helpful in terms of studying because that really allowed me to set a schedule to study for the IB exams and that kind of ethic and time management skills really translated to um, university where exam season is very similar to the IB exam season. How can students find extracurricular activities in university? So the best way to find uh, extracurricular activities to do in university is probably during orientation week. Now that is when you have the broadest access to the widest number of clubs and during orientation what they do sometimes it's torturous sometimes it's better but they make you walk about two miles across downtown Toronto in a club day parade. Now if it's 31 degrees outside it's a tri campus parade but if it's 31 degrees outside and you didn't pack enough water they do have trucks going by the parade handing out water but it is still very hot and everybody is still very sweaty and you're surrounded by probably a couple thousand different U of T students all moving at a very slow pace. Right after that you have club day. Club day is where all of the different clubs at the U U of T St. George campus, they all allocate on uh, King's College Circle. And right now, King's College Circle is unfortunately under construction, so I'm not sure what club day is going to look like in the future. Previously, all the clubs would allocate a table little stand on King's College Circle with a lot of different food trucks and that kind of thing, and you would mingle across the different stands looking for things that you were interested in. Now, if you're in the Life Sciences program, you should also consider different student unions. So Physiology Students Union might be something you're interested in. Pharmacology and Toxicology Students Union might be something you're interested in. If you're gunning for med school, the Medical Sciences Students Union is a big one. Now, those are all different ways to make friends and to get to know people that are also interested in the same careers you are but if you're not looking for a students union there are also different clubs that are health related for example like uh, stem cell club which are primarily targeted towards uh, 
increasing the national bank for stem cells to ensure that you know if someone does have leukemia or a different cancer they're able to find a donor if you're not interested in doing that you might also consider a different club of interest you might consider deca if you're also interested in entrepreneurship you might consider um, a computer science or a robotics club for me although it's completely unrelated to my program i also considered an engineering club called ieee where we uh, host hackathons that was a really great way for me to get to know the importance of networking and collecting sponsorships in terms of university and academics and hosting different campus-wide events. Are there opportunities available at New College as well? In yeah. terms of New College extracurriculars, I actually think there's a wide diversity in terms of the available options. If you're um, interested in student government, the New College Student Council is a big option for you. You can run from first year all the way up to fourth year, I think, um, as a council member where you'll get to make decisions on behalf of the entire New College student community. If you're on residence, you might also consider New College Residence Council. Now, if you're on a residence floor, for example, the sixth floor of Wilson Hall or whatever, you have the opportunity to run for different roles, controlling the funding system, the allocation of budget, or the different events and activities that are specific to each individual floor. So for example, you can run for treasurer of your floor, you can run for the house representative of your floor, you can run for, in terms of residence building, you also have the opportunity to run for uh, residence president or um, different roles among New College Residence Council. Those are more of the leadership uh, affiliated activities that are available at New College, but you can also choose to pursue orientation-based activities. Now this year in orientation, you can choose to become an orientation leader, but following orientation, there's a, a further on role that you can play, and that's as a peer leader. And basically as a peer leader, you're handling an incoming class of students. Basically you make sure that these people understand the different uh, activities or the different help sites or helplines that they can access and the different support that they can access throughout New College and throughout the campus, maybe even further on. If you do want to get involved in orientation, there are different roles that you can choose to pursue. Now, most people will get allocated as a peer leader, where they'll be an orientation leader, essentially, and lead a group of people across campus to different sites, usually in a non-pandemic situation. Uh, further beyond that, there are head peer leaders or other individuals who show exemplary leadership qualities who get to become <laughs> leaders of the peer leaders. Uh, there are also other roles that you can choose to apply for depending on what you're interested in doing, like orientation coordinator, that kind of thing as well. Can I get a BSc and a BA if I do two different programs during my undergrad? In terms of uh, getting the actual degree, you can actually be pretty multidisciplinary in choosing your programs. So for example, you can do economics and biology for all you want. So if you have a mixed interest at the end when you graduate, if, for example, you are choosing uh, economics and biology, an economics degree is a Bachelor of Arts, while a uh, biology degree is a Bachelor of Science, you can ultimately only choose to get one of those degrees, uh, depending on which one you want. What's the difference between a specialist, a major, and a minor in terms of the life science program? In terms of a specialist, a major, and a minor here at the University of Toronto, a specialist does 12 credits worth of required courses for the program, while a major only does eight, and a minor does six. You can graduate with a specialist only, which is 12 credits, but of course you will be doing six credits in breadth courses or other courses that you are interested in. If you want to mix and match, you can also do a specialist and a major, which brings you up to 20 courses and then some. You can also mix and match and do a double major. You can do a double major and a minor. You can do a specialist and a minor. Whichever combination that you choose and whichever combination of programs that you're interested in and that you feel that you're able to do. How do you balance your schoolwork, your social life, and having just some personal time for yourself? In terms of balancing uh, social life and schoolwork and COVID is really hard because uh, in COVID you really start to lose a schedule because it's very difficult when you're basically stuck at home all day. So it's really important to eat on time. It's really important to wake up at the same time every day. It's really important to do some habitual routine to keep yourself focused and set allotted time away from your bed to study. I think those are how I've kept my academics up for most of the time at least. It's really important that you play with your friends or hang out with your friends, play some Among Us, chill, chat, get some coffee, that kind of thing. How do I plan for my undergraduate? 
graduate education. In terms of uh, your undergraduate career, it's really important that during first and second year, you really get your grades down and your prerequisites down so that you can actually apply and get into the program of your choice. If you don't do it by second year, it becomes really difficult and your education can be extended. So you really want to focus in your first and second year on the prerequisite courses, like the ones that I've mentioned before, chemistry, math, biology, all of which are prerequisites for um, the life sciences program, although you can mix and match those with physics as well. Further on, in third and fourth year, you have the opportunity to do research programs and courses. First year and second year, you also have that opportunity through ROPs, but 299 and 399, which are available in second and third year. If you're lucky, you might also be able to get research opportunities in first year. I know that some people do get that chance, but in second year, that's really the opportunity for you to pursue a research course or a program. I know that for my specific program, uh, there are plenty of different opportunities for us to pursue. If you're in the life sciences program, just know that there are different research programs where you write theses and you do actual hands-on lab work beyond that of your first and second year biology and chemistry labs. This is where you actually genuinely get into a project and you um, work with a principal investigator to actually do something or do an experiment or help with the experiment of a graduate student. So this is a really great chance for you to get some really good hands-on experience and that's available starting summer or after second year going into third year. Sorry, I should clarify that. In your fourth year, you might also choose to do a research. You might choose to do a thesis. Um, if you're a specialist, it's actually mandatory for you to write a thesis course. I uh, usually these programs are 496, 499, 497. Those kind of numbers are generally pretty big. If you have the opportunity to do that, I highly recommend because it's a year's worth of research, learning how to write under a principal investigator, under a lab. It's a really good uh, tool uh, for any future career. Uh, opportunities that you might be seeking. Now the big question, what is one piece of advice that you have for incoming life science students or students who we would like to consider a life science program at the University of Toronto? I think health sciences, especially right now, is very lucrative because there's a lot of different research that we don't quite understand yet. There's a lot of different details in anatomy, physiology, in disease, pathology that we don't quite understand and we could always use future researchers in. So I think life sciences is definitely a program that you could look into and if you're choosing to go to medical school, which I know a lot of you are, life sciences is definitely a program that you want to be looking at for your undergraduate career, though it's not necessary, but it does set a very good foundation for medical school and it does provide you the material for your MCAT if you're choosing to write it. Of course, medical school is not the only health sciences related job that you can choose to pursue in the future. So if you want to be a graduate student after your undergraduate career, there's a lot of different research opportunities and further research that needs to be, frankly speaking, done in our current um, curriculum and in our current understanding of science, at least in the life sciences. Broaden your range. Uh, if you're choosing to go to med school, I would say um, by the end of your second year, you really make sure that med school is something that you want to do in preparation for that MCAT. If you're not choosing to go to med school or you're beginning to doubt whether or not you want to do med school, I do think that health sciences careers are multidisciplinary. There's a lot of different opportunities out there. You can work for government, Health Canada. You can work for drug development companies if you're in pharmacology. If you're an immunologist, you can work for drug companies as well. You can work in clinical testing as a laboratory tech. There's a whole variety of different opportunities for you out there and I would highly recommend when you're choosing your program uh, choose something that you're interested in and, and something that you want to do as a future career. That is the end of this video. If it was helpful for you, please give this video a like. If you'd like to explore other programs at U of T, comment down below as to which program you'd like for me to cover. Take care, stay safe, but most importantly, stay groovy. Catch y'all in the next one. I can see what we are, don't know where we belong. Wanna know what you're thinking, wanna know if something's missing. Started stories before, but they ended up short. Give me up to higher places, want you to feel